and welcome to our video over chapter six where we're going to talk about random variables. In this particular video, we're going to focus on what are discrete versus continuous random variables and how can you solve for those important um, concepts regarding describing uh, random variables. And we're going to end up using the same acronym that we use for quantitative data, and that's that CUS, center, unusual, spread, and um, shape. But in order to calculate center and spread, we actually have to learn how to calculate the mean and standard deviation of random variables. So that's what we're going to see in this video. Again, here's that kind of definition of what we're going to be doing. You can also check your Moodle account to see uh, kind of the layman terms of what this is. But can you do these things by the end of this video? And if you can't by the end of this video, watch the addendum video where I solve some of the odd numbered questions at the back of chapter six one. All right. So a probability model. Here's the formal definition of it. It describes the possible outcomes of a chance process and the likelihood that those outcomes will occur. We've done this um, numerous, numerous times whenever you hit probability in any sort of math class. We've talked about probability models, but let's take it one step further and talk about random variables. So if we think about uh, tossing a coin, heads versus tails, then we can create any sort of probability model regarding the number of outcomes or regarding the possible outcomes of chance. You know, what's the chance of flipping heads? What's the chance of, chance of flipping tails? One out of two. And then you can continue on from there. But what if I want to know what is the probability of tossing a coin three times in a row. So I'm going to go ahead and define x as the number of heads obtained. So here, if x is zero, then we're going to call that tails, tails, tails. If x is one, then that means one head is visible. So possible outcomes could be heads, tails, 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 heads, tails, 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 heads. If x is two, then that means the number of heads obtained was two. Here are some possible outcomes. Heads has tails, heads tails, tails, blah, blah, blah. Any of those three are possibilities. And finally, if X is equal to three, then the heads appear three different times. So the only possible outcome would be heads, heads, heads. So there's a total number of six unique combinations. Or sorry, eight. I can do some math right there. Uh, uh, eight unique combinations, one in the zero category, three in the one category, three in the two category, and one in the uh, three category, and we can create our probability table from that. And that's where I got these numbers. I got eight from the total number of unique combinations. There's a one in eight chance of getting tails, 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 a one in eight chance of getting heads, 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 and then a three out of eight chance of getting either one head or two heads. And so that's kind of how we're seeing this. I can create a distribution model uh, based off of this so that I can see the shape, any outliers that would occur. I can also talk about center and spread. So what is that random variable? Why did we assign X? We take any sort of numerical value that describes an outcome of some chance process and we assign a random variable or a random variable and value for it. So the probability distribution, that little graph we created for ourselves, is a random of a random variable gives its possible values and their probability. So not only do we see it here, we can uh, interpret it right here as well. So let's move on to understanding what is the difference between a discrete variable and a concrete sorry, discrete and uh, continuous random variable. So a discrete is a fixed set of possible values. Um, I'm going to specifically look at value x1, x2, x3, or in the heads and tails, I'm looking at value 0, value 1, value 2, value 3. There are no possibilities in between. There's no infinite number of interval sets. It's just those fixed sets. Um, some requirements that are requirements that have hit probabilities every single time before. Our probability must between zero and one. We knew that before. The total number of our probabilities, the sum of all of our probabilities must be equal to eight. In the heads and tails here, uh, we are between zero and one, between zero and one, between zero and one, between zero and one. If I add them all up, I get a probability of eight divided by eight, which is a probability of one. This is just basics behind probabilities. We know this every single time. But let's move on. If we want to analyze that data, we describe the shape, the center, the spread, and the uh, outliers. We call this cussing, center, unusual, spread, and shape. Anytime you see the word describe, there's typically an acronym we've given you to describe the parts that matter the most. So anytime that you need to describe discrete random variables, you're going you're gonna to use the same cuss. So we can talk about the shape of our previous question. It was symmetric. 
Great. We can talk about outliers. There were no really high probabilities or really low probabilities for me to identify as something unusual happening. There was a one out of eight or a three out of eight chance. That was it. But let's talk about center and spread. To talk about center, we're going to talk about the mean. So we need to know how to calculate that. And to talk about spread, we're going to talk about standard deviation. So again, we need to know how to calculate that. So here is the formula for mean. It's not going to be as simple as, okay, let's just calculate the average of each probability. How would we even do that we're just given probabilities and no you're not just going to get the average of all of your probabilities again two main mistakes I see with student work with this here is the actual formula so it is a series and so the series is telling me to take each sequence which is the um, discrete random variable value times its probability and don't forget a series is a sum of each sequence. So I'm going to take the discrete random variable value one times its probability plus the discrete random variable value two times its probability plus and so on and so forth. That's what a series is if you didn't recall that from pre-cal or algebra two. Um, so let's look at this particular question. We are given a baby's APGAR score and you can Google APGAR score for yourself is the sum of the ratings of each, sorry, the sum of the ratings on each of five scales. So they don't tell us anything else about what an APGAR score is. Um, they don't tell us how those five scales are or any of the information about APGAR score. In fact, you don't need to know what an APGAR score is to finish this question. So they're telling you all that information can be summarized in this table with whole number values from zero to 10. So they've already assigned some value zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, blah, blah, blah. And that's associated with the APGAR score um, of the baby. And so we don't know like if zero is an APGAR score or not. We just know that that's the discrete random variable we have assigned to that APGAR score. And that's okay. So um, we're saying let X equal the APGAR score of a randomly selected newborn. So we're just going to assume their zero to 10 represents an APGAR score or something about it that they understand better than we do. We are given the probability of each occurring and you can read this as we see that one in every thousand babies has an APGAR score of a zero, six in every thousand has an APGAR of one, seven in every thousand, two, eight in every thousand, three, 12 in every thousand, four, and so on and so forth. This does not mean we polled a thousand babies after our scores and got this probability to get these numbers. We probably polled hundreds and thousands of babies, maybe even millions of babies from hospitals around the nation, world, who knows where we got these probabilities from. But these are large scores. That's where these probabilities come from. A large number of uh, babies were polled, not necessarily the babies themselves, but probably the hospital and their APGAR scores. So we're actually solving this question, compute the mean and interpret it. So here is my setup for the, the formula for the mean, a series of each value multiplied by each probability. So here is value zero multiplied by probability 0 0.01 plus, because that's how series work, the value one multiplied by its probability plus the value two multiplied by its probability and so on and so forth. What's missing in between this dot, dot, dot represents three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And finally, you can see 10. So all of that math is calculated and we end up with 8.128. So our mean, our U of X will be, 8.128. What does that mean though? What is the interpretation? So here's a little sentence. The mean APGAR score of a randomly selected newborn is 8.128. This is the average APGAR score of many, many randomly chosen babies. So they're really kind of harping on the fact that these probabilities don't just come from a number out of a thousand. That is the probability. One out of a thousand is the probability, but it doesn't mean that we polled a thousand um, babies APGAR scores. Okay, we probably did a lot more. But let's move forward. So not only can we talk about the mean as we talk about center and usual spread and shape, we can also talk about spread. And we're going to learn in just a moment how to calculate the standard deviation. In order to calculate the standard deviation, I have to calculate first the variance because we know that the square root of the variance is standard deviation or standard deviation squared comes back and becomes our variance. So um, Here's the formula for the variance. It is another sigma, so it is another series, but the sequence itself has changed just a little bit. Instead of the discrete random value variable value times the probability, it's now the quantity of your discrete random variable value minus the mean 
which we just solved is 8.128. All of that quantity squared times its probability. So each sequence is a lot more complicated. So let's actually put this in terms of numbers. Okay, so here, same baby APGAR scores. So this very first one is going to be X, X1, initial X value is 0, minus the mean. We just calculated that is 8.128. That whole quantity squared times your probability. That's the first sequence. Plus, here's the second sequence, 1 minus 8.128 squared times 0 0.006 plus and so on and so forth so let's see what that actually looks like here for those of you who are not just able to hear and see here for our visual learners there's a representation again x sub 1 minus the average squared times p sub 1 plus x sub 2 minus the mean squared times p sub 2 plus uh, x sub 3 minus the mean squared times p sub 3 and so on and so forth. So we do that in our calculator and we end up with a variance of 2.066. But we they wanted us to compute the standard deviation. So the only thing left to do to that is take the square root. And I end up with 1.437. But what does that mean? Well, every single standard deviation interpretation we've done basically follows the same formula. So here's that. Um, okay, here it is. A randomly selected baby APGAR score will typically differ from the mean, 8.128, by about 1.4 units or about 1.437 units. That's kind of the interpretation of standard deviation every single time. Finally, we've talked about discrete random, vari uh, random variables. They are more common, but sometimes we have the uncommon um, random variable, which is continuous. X takes on every value on an interval, uh, interval of numbers, including the infinite values between could potentially um, be related to this. So discrete, continu discrete random variables tend to model a normal curve. And if you notice here, continuous random variables tend to model the density curve. Um, in fact, it is described by the density curve. So again, our probabilities are still going to be between zero and one, but our um, Continuous random variables will have an infinite number of possibilities. Uh, and so only on that values will they have a positive probability. And you can kind of read through that. But more often than not, it's going to make more sense when you see an actual example. So we're given this example. The heights of young women closely follow this normal distribution. Uh, ooh, actually, I think... Ah, yeah, so this will be a continuous, um, why would this be a continuous question? Um, this would be a continuous question, even though it's following a normal distribution curve, it, it will be a continuous question because I don't want to know if the woman is 68 inches tall, 69 inches tall, se uh, or 70 inches tall. I want to know if she is between 68 and 70 inches, and there's an infinite number of possibilities between there because there's 68.01, 68.001, 68, et cetera, et cetera. So there are decimal values between and that's why we have a continuous uh, random variable. So my random variable y, the height, it's going to be a continuous random variable. So looking back at the question, we're given the heights of young women closely following a normal distribution curve. We are given and uh, and we're given the mean of 64 inches and standard deviation of 2.7 inches. So the first thing I could do is draw Given off those two numbers, I could draw my normal distribution, z1, z negative 1, z2, z negative 2, z3, z negative 3. You can reference back to chapter, I believe, 2 if you need it. Um, call her height y, and we're going to select one woman at random. If we repeat the random choice very many times, we've seen that phrasing quite often because we're learning that in order to truly calculate probabilities and understand their distributions, we're talking about numbers that occurred very, 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 very many times. Lots of repetitions. Simulations taught us that. Probability models have taught us that. Lots of repetitions. So the distributions of values y is the same normal distribution that describes their height. So we've got a reference point. We're going to use that same normal distribution curve. So what's the probability that I'm falling between 68 and 70 inches? Great. The only thing that changes about this question from a chapter two question is that you have to recognize that y is a continuous um, probability. So you're just going to write it as such. So I've began. Oh, got something funky happening here. Sorry about that. Um, if you ignore the title, the title says example normal probability distribution. Step one says state the distribution and the values of interest. So 
my distribution, I have stated right here. Height Y of a randomly chosen young woman has N. What does N represent? Normal distribution. And what are in my parentheses? This is the mean and this is the standard deviation. So this is my mu and this is my uh, sigma. So if you saw that N parentheses mean comma standard deviation on a multiple choice or on an FRQ, you now understand what they're telling you with that notation. And we want to find the probability of Y. Again, Y is a declared continuous random value representing the height Okay, so if you want to find the probability of Y between 68 and 70, and yes, we can include 68, and yes, we can include 70. So this is notation describing what we just saw, but let's actually calculate it. And you're going to see there's no real difference between this calculation and Chapter 2's calculation. Hey, look at that. It's just Z-score calculation. So first and foremost, I convert observed value 68 to its Z-score of 1.48. I convert observed value 70 to its Z-score of 2.28. Using my probability uh, tables in the back, I can figure out that as I approach probability 2.22 and I approach probability 1.48, I actually have these values. To get the probability between, I just uh, subtract those two values and I got 0 0.0562. So there is a 5.6% um, probability that her height will be, oops, that her height will be, uh, a randomly chosen young woman's height will be between 68 and 70 inches in height. And that is the end of chapter 6.1.